Welcome back to P1. Today we are looking at functions unit 2.3. So a function is a relationship, a mathematical relationship that maps each value of a set of inputs to a single output. Now when we're talking about inputs we're talking about domain. These are in general my x values and the outputs or the range these are my y values or my f of x values and the roots are where we hit the x axis okay when y equals 0 or f of x equals 0 now if I have a function like this um, as I was saying before it will map my domain to my range so looking at this one if I got a domain where one of my values is 3 then what I'm doing is I'm putting 3 into my f of x so this would be 3 squared minus 3 so that would be 6 for my y value this is part of my range look at the next one f of 5 so it's 5 squared minus 3 25 minus 3 is 22 if I'm substituting minus 1 for my x then that's minus 1 squared minus 3 to be minus 2 and then final one here substituting half half squared minus 3 half squared is a quarter quarter minus 3 would be minus 2 and 3 quarters okay or I could have written that as an improper fraction as 11 over 4 and this is the idea of what's happening with my function it's just taking values of x and converting them into that y value that f of x value now let's have a look at uh, the type of question you will see for this, for these functions. So we've got the function f is defined as f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay, now for part a, find the values of, so f of 3. So I'm just substituting 3 in. So I've got 3 squared minus 4 lots of 3 plus 5. So 3 squared is 9. 9 minus, I'll do this as extra steps of 9. Minus 12 plus 5. And that will give me 2. And that's how I find f of a value. Okay, substituted in 1.5, same thing. 1.5 squared minus 4 lots of 1.5 plus 5 and there's nothing to say that we have to do this in our head you know you're more than welcome to use your calculator here and then the final one here f of 6 we'll work these out separately so 6 squared minus 4 lots of 6 plus 5 should be 17 and f of 2 is 2 squared minus 4 lots of 2 plus 5 and 9 minus 8 1 so f of 6 minus f of 2 17 minus 1 so that's 16 let's look at part b I'll take a fresh page for this so on this one now I need to write it in the form x plus p squared plus q. So this is completing the square. So x squared minus 4x plus 5. This is my f of x. So completing the square x minus 2 squared minus 2 squared plus 5. So we've got x minus 2 squared minus 4 plus 5 or 
x minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, and now you can see that p is negative 2, q is a positive 1. Let's have a look at part c now. Now, when we see this hence or otherwise, now that's basically telling us that previous part of the question or one of the previous parts will make it easier to answer this part of the question. So the previous part of the question we had x minus 2 squared plus 1. That was what my f of x was. Now it's asking me why f of x is always greater than 0. Well you can see here this bracket is squared and because it's squared it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero then this is positive one which is obviously greater than zero so the minimum the smallest value we can possibly have here is one which is greater than zero there is no smaller value than that because even if I substitute negative value in here like minus 10 minus 10 plus 2 minus 12 but when I square it it becomes positive so the smallest value this whole bracket can take when it's squared is 0 okay and 0 plus 1 is 1 and that's all I need to do now with my explanation so I would say that you know squared terms are always greater than or equal to zero. So minimum value is zero plus one, which equals one. And that should be sufficient there. Now I'm gonna give you a few of these to try. If you're stuck on any of the questions, just uh, Skip forward in my video to have a little look at my explanation. So a nice easy question here. So a f of four just substitute four in sixteen minus three. 13. Let B, F of minus 3, so again, substitute minus 3 in, so minus 12, minus 3, minus 15. Look at part C, this is G of 5, substitute G in, so 2, 5, Squared, two lots of 25, which is 50. And part D, F of 1, so four lots of 1 minus 3 is 1. Um, then we want H of 3, which is 3 minus 1. So root 2. So f of 1 plus h of 3 is simply 1 plus root 2. And I would leave it as a third rather than changing it to a decimal unless the question asked otherwise. So in this one now, um, f of a equals 6. So f of a equals now a squared plus 5a and that equals to 6 yeah so we substitute a in because that's what's here and then it has to equal 6 so this gives me a squared plus 5a minus 6 equals 0 uh, this looks like it's going to factorize so we want a plus 6 minus 1, 
So A is negative 6 or A is 1. And you can check both of these out, can't you? You know, if I substitute these into my equation, 1 squared plus 5 lots of 1 is 6. And I'll substitute the negative 6 in. Negative 6 squared plus 5 lots of negative 6. So we've got 36 minus 30, which is 6. So it is exactly how I expect it. Okay, number 3. So on this one, the first thing I need to do is complete the square. So x squared plus 6, x minus 3. So that gives me x plus 3 squared minus 3 squared minus my 3. So x plus 3 squared minus 12. Hence, or otherwise, find the minimum value of f of x and state all x and y intercepts. So the minimum value happens and can only happen when this bracket is zero. So when this bracket is zero, x needs to be negative three. And when that happens, f of x will be negative 12. Okay, so to make this bracket zero, I need x equals negative three. And when I substitute x equals negative three into this, I get negative 12 as my y value or my value of f of x. Now, to find out where it hits any of my axes, it's positive x squared and it's in the negative, so it's in the fourth quadrant, so it's definitely gonna hit the axes. So I can see that it's gonna hit the y-axis at minus three, get that from the original equation. So one of the coordinates is zero minus three. This is the y-intercept. And then looking at the x-intercept is obviously when y is zero. So that is when x plus three squared minus 12 equals zero. So x plus three squared equals 12, x plus 3 equals plus or minus root 12, x equals minus 3 plus or minus. Now root 12 can be simplified to 2 root 3. Okay, so that's my two x intercepts here. Um, if I was going to write them as a full coordinate, which I might do in an actual exam, then I would probably put it would be minus 3 plus 2 root 3, and minus 3 minus 2 root 3. So looking at this one, it looks off-putting initially, but actually if you square x cubed, you get x to the power 6. x cubed squared is x to the power 6. So this is just a quadratic. So let's go about solving it like we would any other quadratic. So in this case we've got x cubed and x cubed and it's going to be eight and one. I'll be positive that would be negative. Now, another way of approaching this could have been let y equals x cubed, and then you've got y squared minus seven, y minus eight equals zero. And obviously you end up with the same answers. Like that, which we're solving. So you can start like this way and then you substitute your values back in. Or like I did initially, you can do it in one go. If you spot that, you're comfortable with doing that. Uh, cube root of minus 1 is minus 1, 
cube root of 8 is 2. So there's my answers, and I would get that whichever way I approach this question. Okay? So, final question, number 5. So we've got a function here, again, it's defined 3 to the power 2x, we got 3 to the power x in there, it looks confusing. Let's use that substitution and make our life a little bit easier right from the start. So when I see this 2x and x, that means that this is the squared term, x times by 2, this is the single term. So just so that you know, you know, 3x squared is the same as 3 to the power 2x. Remember your rules of indices there. But what we'll do on this one, um, just to make it a little bit easier, we'll start by going let y equals 3x. Therefore then g of x is equal to y squared minus 28y plus 27. Okay, this then makes this really easy to solve. So it's going to be 1 and 27, and they're both negative. That means that y is equal to 1, or y equals 27. Okay, and then substitute back in, we get 3 to the x equals 1, and 3 to the x equals 27. Now this is actually me solving it all the way to b, but we did have to leave it in this form for a. So if I at this point, jump across here, and I'll write this bit in black so you can see. So for a, my final answer then would be 3x minus 1 and 3x minus 27. Okay. Then part B is about me solving it, so I can carry on and finish this. So 3x equals, 3 to the power x equals 1. So this one, x has to be 0. Anything to the power 0 is 1. And then to solve the second one, if you don't spot it, you need to write the second, the 27 is 3 to the power something. So going through your 3s, do 3 times by 3 is 9, times by 3 is 27, so that's 3 times. So x there is equal to 3, and that's it solved. Okay, so you know, you work out what your base value is, so they're both the same, and then just multiply by that value until you work out what the power is. Hope you found this useful. If you did, Hit a like, hit a subscribe and I will see you for the next lesson.